festive period upon us, we now venture into a den of yuletide debauchery, beset with awkward colleagues, friends, grinches, alcoholics, and office Christmas party. This is Amber. She joined the office herd one month previously, and with her place in the pack still uncertain, she is hoping that the Christmas party will provide her with a venue in which to merrily share in festive cheer and firm up her social standing on the corporate ladder. To put that plainly, she wants to get drunk and make friends. Let's follow her on this exciting escapade. Her first obstacle is known in the wild as a conversation circle. A tight-knit group of friends have bonded together, and Amber struggles to break the siege, this fortress of camaraderie, leaving her on the outside, attempting to stave off loneliness with her cellular device. But there are only so many times one can swipe left and right on her home screen. She needs to make her move. It's now or never. She has opted for the bold strategy of laughing loudly to try to break into the circle. However, she has mistimed the conversational flow and has laughed at a heart-wrenching tale about a recently deceased pet. Her only option now is to retreat into the darkness. Across the room we find the office manager. His antics attempt to portray a similar humour. But his ruse has failed, and he comes across as nothing more than what he is, a desperate man, afraid of the quite probable prospect of dying alone. The fledgling employee attempts to integrate herself into the party atmosphere by sampling the homemade festive cocktails. The combination of red wine, apple sirs, salt, orange squash, coke and egg yolk proves too festive for her Scrooge-like stomach to handle. But to avoid offending the drink's creator, she continues with a smile. After several merry beverages, the office manager now has a tie around his forehead, a physiological display indicating, look at me, I'm a fun guy, please believe me, I'm a fun guy. With this confidence-boosting fashion statement, he's got up the courage to dance with a partner. Unfortunately for the partner, there just wasn't much chemistry. And so, the dancing becomes too much. As the lone wolf takes a topple, his actions end with him being laid, just in a different manner to that which he expected. This is certainly a night he will never forget. Claimed intellectual attempts to impress a female by telling her that karaoke is actually Japanese for empty orchestra. Thankfully for the human race, no one cares. As is typical of any social gathering, one music lover has appointed himself DJ, owing to them having seen Calvin Harris one time whilst they were at university. Despite frequent song requests, the office's David Guetta guards the orcs cable like a dragon guarding its treasure and rebuffs all oncomers. However, Amber is not one to shy from a battle. She performs the subtle duck below the table and change the song manoeuvre without being seen. Swiftly done. But in the end, Christmas is a time to come together, 
a time for humanities to set aside their differences and share in a festival of joy, revelry and amounts of alcohol. Merry Christmas.